Right. Welcome, uh, everybody. We have a couple of uh, new faces. Welcome to Yonina, uh, who's here with us in the room. Welcome to Hannah and Mindy, uh, who are with us on Zoom for the first time. Um, this shiur um, started about a year ago, um, and it started after I did a one-off shiur on Mashiva Ruach um, Omori Dageshim. We started, it was just about this time of year, last year, when we started saying it, and I gave a one-off shiur, and I realized that actually there was a lot of um, gaps in our knowledge about the tefillah. So I thought, okay, let's start at the beginning and work our way through. So after that, we uh, started uh, with Moda'ani when we woke up in the morning, and we have, I think this is about shiur number 39 or 40, um, anybody that wants to have a look at the previous ones, they're all recorded. They're all on the YouTube channel. You can go back and look at any of them if you like. Uh, but we are up to um, the uh, end of uh, the Shema. We finished the end of the Shema and we're in the Bracha of Geula. The Bracha between the end of Shema and the beginning of Shemona Estra. Now, Shema and Shemona Estra which we will refer to henceforth as the Amida, uh, unless I forget and call it the Shemona Esra again, which is quite likely, um, are the two most important parts of the whole of Tefillah. Shema being the declaration of faith in the one God and in the concept of reward and punishment and the uh, um, belief and truth of the Geula, the redemption from uh, Mitzrayim, which we are enjoined as a positive commandment to mention night and day. So that's what the Shema is about. Now, the Tefillah, the Amidah, which is also known as Tefillah, it's a bit confusing because we say, use the term Tefillah to mean, collectively, to mean prayer. But in, in um, rabbinic uh, writings, the word tefillah refers to the Amida, uh, to the standing prayer. Um, and um, those, the, obviously, the standing prayer, the Amida, um, is the central part of the tefillah, of the prayer. Uh, it consists of various different sections, which we will talk about. Um, when um, when we get there. But before we get there, we've not quite finished the... Um, I've got a bit of confusion here because we've got another shield. I'll just tell everybody here. We've got another shield going on in the, the other room here. Uh, and so there are people uh, getting a bit confused as... Um, uh, can you just call Elisa? Have you got your phone? Okay. Um, here, can you just call Elisa, please? She wants to know something about the magnets. Um, so we are now holding, and uh, we finished last week, halfway through the uh, bracha of Gula, the bracha of uh, redemption, which connects the Shema to the Shemona Esra. And um, we got as far as Ezrat Avotenu. Let me just find it in my Siddur. Here we are. So we spoke last week about the concept of Emet. Okay. We had the uh, connection of Adonai Eloichem at the end of the Shema to the word Emet, which is the beginning of the next paragraph, Emet B'Yatziv Evanachon V'Kayam V'Yasha. And we went through that last week and we understood that the concept of Emet, truth, is connected with the Shema because at the end of the Shema, when we have declared our belief in the one God. We have declared in uh, our belief in the idea that God is is our specific uh, God, the God of, of, uh, of the Jewish people, and he has redeemed us from Eretz Mitzrayim. We declare immediately, Emet, that is true. It's almost like saying Amen, which is, of course, the same, uh, the same sort of root. Amen comes from Emunah. Emet is truth. Um, so, the idea is that this emet, uh, which we say, this truth, is connected to Shema because we are declaring 
that what we have just said is true. Um, and then, as we explained last week, depending on whether you have a Nusach Ashkenaz or Nusach Spad, there are either five or seven declarations of truth, okay, uh, um, which, which we went through last week. Um, and then we come to the bracha, the, the main part of Geula, of redemption. So we're up to Ezrat Avotenu. Now, this is a, um, um, a declaration of what's gone on in the past. We're going to end this bracha with the words, Baruch Atah Hashem, Ga'al Yisrael. Blessed are you, God, who has redeemed Israel in the past tense. So this paragraph of Ezrat Avotenu is about what has gone on in the past. And it's part of our declaration of Emet. This is all one bracha. It begins with Emet and it ends with Ga'al Yisrael. We've got an artificial stop here at Ein Elohim Zulatecha, or if you're in the Sosfad, it's Ein Elohim Zulatecha Sela. Um, and then there's an artificial stop. But it's an artificial stop because there's no bracha there. The bracha is at the end. So this is all one bracha. So the concept of emet, the concept of truth, um, is connected to the concept of uh, geula of redemption, um, and we'll see as we go along um, how the two the two are connected together. So let's just go through Ezra Avotenu and see what what it's talking about. Ezra Avotenu ata hu me olam. Ezra means help. Ezra Avotenu, you have been the help um, of our fathers forever. Meolam, you have always been the help of our ancestors. In other words, <laughs> um, required uh, assistance, you were there for them. In what way were you their help? Next few words tells you. Magain, a shield. Umoshia, a saviour. Yeah, Moshia. Is a savior, same word as Yahushua. Yahushua. Mogenu Mashiach, the shield and the, uh, of the savior, Livnehem Acharehem, to their children after them, Bechol Dor Vador, in every generation. So this is a declaration that our connection with Akadish Baruch Hu and our um, belief. In the in that in the our belief in the in the um, reliance on a Kaddish Baruch Hu to be our savior and our redeemer. But remember, this is all about redemption. Goes way way back to Avotenu. Who are we talking about when we talk about Avotenu? Generally speaking, yeah, our patriarchs, the Avot. So. Uh, thank you. So the the you are the help of our fathers, meaning the Avot. You are the shield and the savior, Livnehem, to their children, Acharehem, after them, the Chol Dovador. So right from the beginning, all the way through to every generation, you have been the uh, the help and savior of our ancestors. Barum Olam Moshevecha. Okay, barum. What's that? Where's what's the root of that word? And that to raise. Yeah, high height. Ramat, <laughs> Ramat, Poleg. Okay, Ramat Hagolan, Ramat Aviv. Rama is a height. We had this the other day when we talked in in uh, in the shiur on Yirmiyahu. We talk kol barama. A voice was heard. Whose voice was heard in Rama? Rachel mevacha al baneha. Okay, Rachel was weeping over her children, and, and we're told there kol barama. And now it was a it was a dual meaning there because Rama is a place. The Rama that, that we're talking, the place that where Rachel was meant to have been there was the Rama which was just north of Yerushalayim, but it also means on high. Okay. Uh, on high, meaning in heaven. So, Barum Olam Moshavecha, your Moshavecha, where you live, we're talking to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, 
is Barum Olam, the heights of the universe. In other words, in heaven. We're recognizing God's dominion over the world. Umishpatecha, and your judgments, Vitzidkatcha, and your righteousness, Ad Afse Aret, goes to the end of the earth. So here you've got this dual idea of time and space. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has been there for us forever in time, right? From Avotenu, Bechol Dovador, okay? Bnei Hem, children after him, every generation going right back to the Avot. So we're recognizing HaKadosh Baruch Hu's existence and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's dominion and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's help to us and, and to, that we are his people going right back all the way through the generations. So that is start to finish in time, okay? The next bit is start to finish in space from Barum Olam, or Olam, uh, Barum Olam okay? From the heights of heaven, Ad Afse Aret, until the end of the earth. So that is the full extent of space, okay? The first part was the full extent of history, of time. So we're recognizing God's uh, um, greatness and fulfillment, if you like, in all dimensions, in all full dimension of time and the full dimension of space. In other words, he's filling the entire universe forever. It's a recognition of what? Of his sovereignty. And what is the Shema all about? Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echav. It's about HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Dominion, his sovereignty. It's exactly what it's about. So Ezra Tavutenu, right from the beginning of this Gi'ula, is telling us, uh, it's referring us, if you like, back to the Shema. And that's why it's here, because it's connecting Shema with the next bit, important bit, which is the, the Tefillah, the Amida, uh, uh, in which we're going to uh, uh, praise the Kaddish Baruch Hu, we're going to ask for things from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, and we're going to thank a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's the structure of the Amida, which we'll come to. Right at the moment, we're in this linkage between Shema and the uh, Tefillah. Ashrei ish she yishma le mitzvotecha. Now, interestingly, in the Nusach Sfad, there's an emet here before that. Emet ashrei ish sheishmalitzotecha. It's true, um, which is an it's an important fat feature because this these last these two um, sentences here don't really fit in, and you could say that it seems to have been inserted at a later date. But the fact that in the Nusach Sfad it's got an emet in front of it would link it to all the other emets and say that it was part of it. Because actually, it doesn't really fit in with the style of the rest of this paragraph. Let's just go through what I'm talking about here. What does it mean? Ashrei ish. Happy is the man, sheyishma, who listens, lemitzvotecha, to your commandments, v'toratecha, and your Torah, udvaracha, and your word, yasim al libo. He places on his heart. Okay. Now, in in, in Hebrew, what does it mean? Lasim al al alev. If I say to you, Frank, simlev, pay attention, pay attention. Simlev means pay attention. If you say, if you say, somebody says, says to you, um, um, did you did you notice uh, did you notice uh, um, how happy so and so looked? Losam tilev. I never noticed. I never paid attention. Okay, that's a, in modern Hebrew. Yes, Hannah. Did you want to say something? No. Okay. Why do you have to, to internalize? La Simal Libo is to put on his heart to internalize it. Why, yes. why, why is it to pay attention and not to internalize? Um, I think it does mean I think it does mean internalize. It absolutely does mean internalize. I think that's a better translation. Um, I was I was just pointing out that in modern Hebrew, la sima libo means to pay attention. Uh, but you're absolutely quite right uh, that that actually the, you, the the idea of internalizing is a much better translation. Um, 
take to heart. Yes, to take to heart. Another expression which means to internalize. Yeah. So I, I like that translation. That's a very good translation. So happy is the man who listens to your uh, commandments and internalizes, takes to heart, pays attention to all of those things, your Torah and your words. Now, let's just put that to the side, because if that wasn't there, the next bit follows on very nicely from the previous bit. This That's what I, I meant when I said those two sentences don't quite fit in. Because what were we talking about previously? We were talking about the greatness, the sovereignty, the uh, the, the the fullness of Akadosh Baruch Hu's majesty in time and space. Next one, Emet Atahu Adon Leamecha. It is true that you are an Adon. What's Adon? Master. 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 Adon Olam, Master of the Universe. Adon Olam, master of the universe. It's true that you are the Adon to who? Who are you the Adon to? Le'amecha, to your people. You are the master of your people, that's us. So again, this is this fits in with Ezrat Avotenu. You are the help uh, to our fathers. So this bit of Ashrei Ishi Yishmali Mitzvotecha is a little bit, it, the style doesn't fit in. It's interrupted. Uh, the flow of what was going on before, and we'll come back to it. So, you are, it's true. We declare it's true that you are the master to your people. And you are the mighty king. Gibor is mighty. You are a mighty king. Lariv Rivam. What does that mean? Lariv means to argue. Right, Riv Riva means to argue their case, to fight for them. Right, so if you are in an argument, then you have to put forward your case. If I have an, an argument with you, I have to put forward my case, and you put forward your case. So La Riv Rivam here means that, that when it when the chips are down, who is it that is going to be the mighty king? Who's going to be the master of the universe for your people? Who's going to be the champion of your people? That would be a good. Uh, a good um, translation here, wouldn't it? Adon Leamecha, the champion of your people, because he's going to plead your cause. He's going to be the one, the mighty king, who uh, pleads your case. Uh, who's going to who's going to fight for you? Again, the next part also fits in. Emet, it's true. Atahu Rishon, you were the first. Atahu Acharon, and you are the last. Again, that this idea of um, filling from start to finish. We've had it three times now. We've had it in in time, in terms of avotenu uh, v'choldovador. We've had it in space, from the, the the heights of the heavens to the edges of the earth, and now we've got it again uh, uh, in 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 time, as it were. You are the first and the last. Uh, Jeff is smiling there because he's thinking about Barry White. Yeah. I knew it. I knew you were thinking about Barry White. I could see it on your face. That's the second time I've read your mind. Yeah, no, but there's sometimes that there's so much in Priscilla that my phone won't You're the, my first, my last, my everything. That's it. Well, Kodesh Baruch Hu is Atau Rishon, Atau Acharon. That's it. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see the next bit, Jeff. It fits in with Barry White. Umi Baladecha, Ein Lanu Melech. And umi baladecha, what does that mean? Yeah, and without you, you can see the word in the middle of there, beli. Can you see the word beli in the middle of that word? So it means, which means without. Umi baladecha, and without you, ain lanu melech. We don't have a king. So you are my first, my last, my everything. Yeah, that's it. That's the Barry White. Um, so next time you daven tomorrow morning, you're gonna have you're gonna have Barry White. Yeah. Okay. Mi baladech ein lanu melech goel moshiach. And apart from you, we say we don't have any other king who is a goel, a redeemer, u moshiach, and a savior. So what are we saying here? You are the whole thing. This is fits in with this whole theme of. Uh, of redemption. We can only rely on a Kaddish Baruch Hu for redemption. We have no other king apart from him. Uh, and again, um, you can see that if I was to remove 
Ashrei ish she yishmane mitzvotech of a Torah tchal dvarche yasim alibo. Take that out. This whole thing would flow much better. It, this looks like it's been inserted uh, afterwards. We'll come back to it when we've finished going through here. And now we come to the uh, Ikar, the main point of this whole bracha. As we come to the, uh, as we come towards the, the the climax of the bracha, we start to get into the nitty gritty of what it's really all about. Mimitzrayim ge'altanu Adonai Eloheinu. God, our God, from Egypt, you redeemed us. Now, the redemption from Egypt, we've already said, is a, a Torah requirement to mention this twice a day, morning and night. Why? Why is it so important? Well, it was the birth of our nation as the, the nation of God. That's absolutely right. What do we say in Seder night? We say... Everybody has to um, see himself as if he had been redeemed himself. Why? Because if we had not been redeemed, where would we be? We'd still be slaves to, to Pharaoh in Egypt. We might not be still in physically in Egypt. It would still be slaves to some other um, deity, some other um, some other power. So the uh, the Gi'ula from Mitzrayim. The, the redemption from Egypt is the uh, the fundamental part of our birth as a nation and our birth as a nation that belongs to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's what singled us out as that Am Segula before even Matan Torah. What do we say in Dayenu? Okay. We say it, 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 if we'd been rede redeemed from Egypt, it would have been enough. Okay. I always thought, oh, what's the point of that? You've been redeemed of Egypt. You don't get the they don't get the Torah. Well, you haven't done you've done half a job. No, because with the redemption from Egypt in itself and of itself was sufficient to make us part, uh, not parts, to make us the nation of uh, of Akadosh Baruch Hu. That uh, uh, um, act of redemption that Akadosh Baruch Hu did for us, which could only have been done by a miracle. We've spoken about this before. We were so mired. In, uh, in in the uh, culture of slavery, we were so mired in the culture of Mitzrayim that it could only take a miracle um, to get us out. And it's a bit like we were speaking, we've been speaking about this for a few couple of weeks now, haven't we, since I, I wrote that article about um, time for the, the British Jews to leave Britain, um, that it's, it's got to a stage where only something really drastic can save them. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it possible to say that um, bringing us out of Egypt gave us our freedom? Because if you look at Mitzrayim from the point of view of um, Tzal, narrow, um, and it took us out of being compressed into slavery and gave us our freedom and that's why we need to remember it twice a day well i think that fits very nicely too mitzrayim uh, i'll just repeat that um for everybody here they didn't hear it on the uh, from the computer um uh, hannah is saying that the, the the root of the word mitzrayim is tsar narrow narrow or, or difficult um and the redemption from egypt is what gave us our freedom we were in a very narrow, difficult situation. And, and then we are uh, uh, redeemed, and that allows us freedom. It allowed us freedom of thought, it allowed us freedom of, of, uh, uh, of action, it allowed us freedom of religion, it allowed us freedom to be uh, God's people. We couldn't be God's people when we were slaves because we were slaves to Pharaoh. So uh, it, it's, it's, it was the beginning of a process. That's right. Uh, I mean, it took 40 years to get the... the uh, and, and you could argue, you could argue that it took more than 40 years to get the slave out of Egypt. You could take the, I was thinking, you could take the people out of Egypt, but it took longer to take Egypt out of the people. Um, so, and of course, that's why we, one of the reasons why we failed so spectacularly at the uh, at the sin of the ego, because we were still um, within that, that the Egypt was still inside of us, even though we weren't inside of Egypt. So, Mimit Shrine Gel Tanu Adonai 
not only did we come out of this narrow, uh, um, restricting place, mi beit avadim piditanu, you redeemed us from the house of slavery, which is even uh, even gr a greater uh, um, sorrow, if you like, than being in Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is the sort of, if you like, the 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 uh, umbrella term for being in that difficult, narrow pl place. But even within that place, we were slaves. We were in the house of slavery. Kol b'chorehem haragta. You killed all of their firstborn. U v'chorecha ga'alta. There's that word ga'al again. And your firstborn, that means, who are we talking to here? Kodesh Baruch. Who's the Kodesh Baruch who's firstborn? Us. B'chor b'ni Yisrael. B'ni Yisrael are my firstborn. So your firstborn, Akadosh Baruch Hu, you redeemed. There's another uh, uh, um, word uh, of Goel. How many times have we said that in, in this sentence already? Three times already. Mi baladecha ein lanu melech Goel. Mi mitzrayim ge'altanu. Kol bechoreim ragto bechocha ge'alta. That's three times already. V'yam suf bakata. And you split the reed sea. V'zeidim tibata. And you drowned the Zaydim. What's the Zaydim? Arrogant. Well, it's, uh, yeah, arrogant. Uh, arro according to Rabbi Sachs, it's arrogant. Usually, Zaydim means, where do we have that in Shemona Esra? Gover oivim umachnia Zaydim. It's talking about those who are, um, uh, they are talking about. To antagonists, those who are anti anti uh, God, if you like, they are the uh, um, the the scoffers, the non believers. So v'zedim tibati, you drowned. He, he, Rabbi Sachs says they're arrogant. Vididim hevarta, v'yedidim. What's a yedid? Yedid, nefesh. Friend, it's a friend. A friend, a, a friend. beloved, a beloved. It's more than a friend. A yedid is. Somebody who's beloved. Um, He'evarta. What's He'evarta? You cause to pass. So this is the contrast here. Again, look at the contrast. Bechorehem haragta. Their firstborns, you killed. Bechorecha. Your firstborns, you redeemed. You see the contrast Their there. firstborn. And okay. um, you split the Red Sea. Then you drown. Right. You redeemed. Us, the ones that you you are you didim your your um your beloved you passed across you caused to cross the Red Sea, but yechasu mayhem mayhem tsarehem, and um you caused the water to cover up tsarehem. What's that mean? Yeah, Rabbi Sachs says their foes, their enemies. Again, it's the same word as Mitzrayim. So tsar. Those that cause you tsar, tsarehem, are the tsurus, the same word as tsurus. Yiddish is the <laughs> Yiddish word tsurus no. comes from the. Uh, no, it's just, just, a, a, just a yeah, just a Yiddish uh, pronunciation of the word tsarot, tsurus. Okay, tsurus means troubles. Somebody uh -huh. who is a tsar to you is somebody who causes you trouble. That's your enemy. So this word tsarehem is the same root as the word mitzrayim. Sarat is with an ayin. Yeah, it's with it. Sarat is with an ayin. So it's uh, pro probably has some yeah. kind of connection to it, but the uh, but the uh, Sarat is with an ayin. You've got a problem, by the way. Yes, that's true. Echad mehem lo notar. There wasn't a single one of them left. Okay, now, um, is that true? Echad mehem lo notar. According to the Midrash, that's not true. You could take poetic license and say tsarehem yeah um ve yechasu maim tsarehem the water covered them and put them in a tight place because it came <laughs> over the top well and... it did it, uh, yeah i mean it did didn't it <laughs> yes yes uh, definitely definitely uh, um is 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 factually correct I'm not sure it's grammatically correct, but uh, as you say, you can take a bit of grammatical license there. And they were then put in a, in, in a narrow and difficult place because they had the sea on top of them. But Echad Mehem Lo Natar, the Midrash tells us that actually 
Pharaoh was left. And that was his biggest punishment. The biggest punishment for Pharaoh was to see everybody else washed up on the on the on the shore and his his remember what did he take he took 600 of his best uh, men and th these were the like, you know the the, the uh, shayetet uh, shayetet of of the uh, of the um, egyptian army and they were completely done in and for him to see that uh, midrash says that he was spared in order to give to to to, to give him even more of a punishment uh, no doubt that uh, um, he after that he was probably done in as well. But anyway, um, now let's carry on and just uh, finish off uh, where we're up to here. Al Zot for all of this, all of what the the redemption from Egypt, the the splitting of the Red Sea, the fact that we were saved and they were not. All this contrast between the the, the enemies and us for all of this. Shibahu. Ahuvim v'romamu el, the beloved ones. Ahuvim from Ahava, the beloved ones. That's us. Shivachu from the word shevach, praise. They praised v'romamu el. There's that. There's that word rom again. Romamu, romamu Adonai leinu mishtachu lahar kodesh. Romamu means to to cause to go higher, or in fancy language, to exalt. Okay, to exalt, to 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 raise up in praise. When you raise somebody up, you're praising them, yeah? You build them up, you raise them up. So that's the word Romamu. So the beloved ones, that's us. We praised and we exalted Hashem. Venatnu Yedidim Zmirot. There's that Yedidim again, that's us. We are the beloved. What did we do? Venatnu, we gave Zmirot. Song, song. Yeah, songs, zmirot, shirot, v'tishpachot. Okay, what's the difference between a zemer and a shir, Frank? Yeah, I think zemer is music, is more music, and shirot is more poetry. Uh, but they're related, obviously. Zmirota, uh, I think, is, is a, 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 a zamar in modern Hebrew, is a singer, singer, a vocalist. Yeah, singer. Zamar is a singer. Um, and what is a, a how do you say a poet? Mishorev mm -hmm. from the word shir. So shirot, I think, is is poetry. What we would call in English poetry, zmirot is songs. Tishbachot? No. Same word as Shevach. Praise. Praise. Tishbachot, praise. Brachot, blessings. The Hodaot, thanks. So we, the, the, um, the, the beloved, that's us, what did we do after the Yitziat Mitzrayim and after the Yamsuf had split? What did we do? How did we do that? As Yashir Moshe of Israel, we sang Shira. Okay, we sang Shirat Ayam. What did Shirat Ayam consist of? It consisted of Zmirot, Shirot, Vatishbachot, Brachot, Vodaot. This is just telling us a fact of history. The, the Torah tells us that we sang praise to Agadish Baruch Hu. And here we are reminding, as if Kaddish Baruch Hu needs reminding, but we are, as it were, reminding Agadish Baruch Hu that we are his Yididim. We are his. Well, we are reminding ourselves that's true. It's true, but the reason I the reason I'm I mean you're right, of course. But the reason I'm saying that, as it were, we're reminding a Baruch Hu is because what we're leading into, we're leading into the tefillah where we are going to ask for things. So when you ask for things, you have to schmooze up the person that you're going to ask beforehand. Okay, which we will see in the first three bracha of the uh, Shemon Esra, which is the praise. But this is this is the lead into the requests. So before we ask for something, we we are reminding Hakadosh uh, uh, Baruch that we are your Yididim, we are your beloved. And when you did it for us last time uh, or first time in, in Egypt and after Kriyat Yamsuf, what did we do? We sang we sang song. 
and we sang Zmirot, Shirot, Vatishbachot, Brachot, Vodaot, who to? La Melech, El, Chai, the Kayam. To the God who is Chai, living, the Kayam. Kayam means existing. So uh, it, 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 Kayam means um, everlasting, really. Chai, the Kayam uh, um, means living and everlasting. Ram, there's our word again. Hai, the Nisa, another word for height. How do, how do we get to Nisa being height? Mm, correct. Laset means to carry. When you carry something or when you lift it, you lift up something. Yeah. Where do you see that? Where do you see that word Laset? What we say, what we say every single day at the moment. Shir Hamalot Esa Einai El Heharim. I lift up my eyes to the mountains, Nain Yovoizri, from whence comes my help. Esa, to lift up. Okay. Vayisa Avram Eteinav. Avram lifted up his eyes, and what did he see? He, he saw the three, the three men coming from a distance, lifting up. So um, Nisa, Ramva Nisa means high and lifted up, so exalted. Gadol Venora, great and awesome. These are all descriptions of us praising Akadosh Baruch Hu. These are the Tishbachot. These are the praises that we're giving to Akadosh Baruch Hu. As we approach the Shemona Esra, the Amida, we are increasing our praises of Akadosh Baruch Hu. And we're now describing some of the characteristics of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mashpil Geim. Mashpil. Humble. What's the Shvela? Where is the Shvela in geography? Between Where is the Shvela? mountains. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the valleys. Shvela is the, low, the lowlands. I think you would call it the lowlands. So, mashpil geim. What's geim? Arrogant. Geim. If you are geah by somebody, you are proud of somebody. So, geah, it's the same word as ga'ava, haughtiness. And what does a Kaddish Baruch Hu do to haughty people? Mashpil. He causes them to be lowered. Mashpil <laughs> means to lower. Um, and Rabbi Sachs translates it as humbles the haughty. Note the uh, alliteration there. Beautiful expression. But literally, it means he brings low those who are um, overly proud. And again, a contrast. Magbiha shfalim. Magbiha. Where have you seen that word before? He raises up. Hagba. Hagbaha. Okay, when you lift up the Sefer Torah. So, Magbiha, he lifts up. Shfalim, there's our same word again, those who are lowly. So he brings down the overly haughty and he brings up those who are uh, humble. Ramvanisa. Magbia also means to, to lift up. Same idea. Magbia, the word for height. What's the word for height? Gova. Gova. Okay, so. Magbia means to bring high. Uh, Nisa is from the word laset to carry. They're both ideas of lifting up. Okay. Could you say that Nis Nisa is to elevate? Nisa is to elevate, yes. You could say elevate. Elevate would be a good translation of Nisa, of laset, to carry, to elevate. Yeah. Um, what else does he do? Um, he is Motse Asirim Bezrat Hashem. Motse. What does Motse mean? Motse. Ha Motse Lechem Min Haaretz. To extract Yitziat Mitzrayim. Um, same idea, same root of the word to take out. Motse Asirim. The imprisoned. What are they Asirim? Somebody who is Nesar. Somebody who is captive somebody who is closed in as if something is asur it's forbidden that means it's all closed right so asirim is a prisoner so mutsi asirim hakadosh baruch is the one who brings out prisoners 
Tomorrow morning, when you say this bracha, say it with kavana, because what we're praying for is what we all want, is that these asirim, these prisoners, are will be brought out. Ufode anavim, and um, he will... Um, Fode, Fode means to redeem, like Pidyon yeah. Aben, same, same word yeah. as Pidyon Aben. Fode anavim, who wants an, an poor. anav? The poor, the poor. Yeah, yeah. it means uh, uh, somebody who is an anav is somebody who is humble, a humble person. Um, the ozer dalim, somebody who oh, ozer helps the dalim, the poor. poor. That's the poor. So this is a Kaddish Baruch Hu. We're praising a Kaddish Baruch Hu as the champion of the weak and the vulnerable. There is nobody more weak and vulnerable than a captive, a humble person, and a poor person. These are all vulnerable people. And we are praising HaKadosh Baruch Hu for those uh, midot, for those characteristics. Now, what is the greatest possible praise that a person can give another person? I've not, I, I've not asked the question correctly. The greatest compliment that you can pay to somebody is what? To emulate them. To do the same as them, right? If you emulate somebody, that's because you think that they're doing the right thing. So we are praising Akadosh Baruch Hu here for being the champion of the vulnerable. What does Akadosh Baruch Hu tell us to do in the Torah over and over and over again? He tells us to look after the widow, the stranger, and the orphan, the vulnerable, and the weak. Uh, and those that haven't got anything, you mustn't take their, their their pledge and keep with it overnight. You've got to give it in back. The, the, the hired worker, you've got to pay on the day. The Torah, which was a completely revolutionary idea three and a half thousand years ago, championed and champions the uh, the vulnerable. And we here in this bracha are praising HaKadosh Baruch Hu as the one who does all of these things. We are made... What does that mean in the image of God? It means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Rachamim, we have to be Rachamim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Chesed, we have to be Chesed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks after the weak and the vulnerable, we have to look after the weak and the vulnerable because we are a miniature HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what Selem Alekim means. And, and the, the emulation of God's Midot, that is the whole of the Torah. Our job is to emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be as close as we possibly can to the perfect midot of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That's our job. And we can't ever reach that because, of course, you know, we're in a different sphere. But our job is to personify in this world the midot that we see of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And here, in this prayer, where we are uh, um, approaching uh, a Kaddish Baruch Hu face-to-face, -face, as it were, that's what we're doing when we have the Amidah. We're standing in front of a Kaddish Baruch Hu face to face, right in front of his face. We are saying right here, these are the characteristics that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has, and therefore unsaid and unspoken, but should be in our hearts, that is the what we, we have to do as well. Ve'one le'amo, listen to this one. Ve'one le'amo, one, answer, la'anot means to answer, ve'one le'amo, and he answers his people when? The eight Shavam Elav. When Shavam at the time, no, no, that's with this is with an ayin, and Shavam is with a vet. So it's a different word. Shavam here it means it wins when they cry out. It's a cry. When we cry out to our Kodesh Baruch Hu, One Liamo, he answers us. Again, what, what are we meant to do? Somebody cries out to us for help. We answer that cry for help. That's what we're meant to do. That is our job. So here we're saying um, that um, Kodesh Baruch Hu is, is the, the ultimate champion of the weak. All of these things that we've said, Mashpil Geyim, Magbi Ashfalim, Motzei Asirim, Podei Anavim, Ozei Dalim, Onei Be'leamo, Be'et Shalav, Shavam Elav, all of those things can be summed up in one phrase, looks after the vulnerable. And that's that's the midah of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which we have to emulate. And if you look through the whole of Nevi'im, all of the prophecies 
of uh, of Yirmiyahu and Yishayahu and Yechezkel, they they are going on about two things that we did wrong the whole time: Avodazara, idol worship, which we don't really have a big um, Yetzirah for today. That seems to have changed. But the second thing they go on about, Zachariah particularly as well, social justice. Social justice. Two things. Idol worship, social justice. And when there's no social justice, that is when it all goes wrong. Uh, and the whole of the uh, um, the whole of uh, of the Nevi'im Rishonim, the whole of the early prophets is talking about those things. And we've mentioned we mentioned this last week as well in, in, when we were talking about Yirmiyahu. At the end, we we're talking about Zechariah, uh, the prophet Zechariah on Tisha B'Av. Um, uh, the people who, the, who Zechariah was in, living at the time when they were rebuilding the second temple, they hadn't yet rebuilt it, but started. They sent a message from Bavel to Eretz Israel to Zechariah, who was the prophet, and saying, should we fast on Tisha B'Av? Because we're now building a second Beit HaMikdash. Do we still need to fast for the destruction of the first? And Zechariah says, chapter 9, if you want to look it up, Zechariah says, don't know, good question. I'll ask God. Kaddish Baruch Hu says to him, go and tell him this. I never asked you to fast in the first place. Did I ask you to fast? I never asked you to fast. But I'll tell you something, he says. You can fast all you want. And it means nothing unless you listen. And this is what he says. You listen to the Nevi'im Rishonim. You listen to the first prophet, the early prophets. And what's he talking about there? And Zechariah then goes on and tells us about social justice. Look after the widow, look after the orphan, look after the poor, because that's what they hadn't done. And that was the problem. So the answer to shall I still fast it, from a Kodesh Baruch Hu is waste the time fasting unless you change your ways. And what ways do you need to change? The ways that you weren't doing the proper things, which was looking after uh, the vulnerable. So here, when we we read this uh, these this tefillah in the morning, we are recognizing God as the one who is uh, um, the champion of the uh, vulnerable, and in particular for us now, we want to say mutzi asirim with great kavana, uh, and therefore we're recognizing that that is our responsibility. And then. Um, we then, uh, um, so that's really the end of that section. We come to the next section now, which is the the, the conclusion of this uh, section towards the Shemona Esra. And we're now um, summarizing what we've just done. Tehilot le'el elyon. Tehila, what's a tehila? Same word as halel, praise. Tehilot, praises le'el elyon. God on high. Baruch Hu Umvorach. Blessed be he. Moshe Uvene Israel. Moshe and the Bene Israel. Lecha Anu Shira Besimcha Rabba. They Anu answered you. Anu, same word as La'anot, yeah? We had it just before. But on Leamo. We, i.e., Moshe and Bene Israel, answered you. How did we answer you? What were we answering? We were answering the, uh, and what is an answer? It's a response, yeah? What was the response to the splitting of the sea? As Yashir Moshe and Israel. They sang songs of praise. So here, this is a reminder, either to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, as if he needs it, or to us, as Jeff would say, that we need to remember that Moshe and the Bnei Israel, what did they do? They sang they answer the Kaddish Baruch Hu with a shira, with a song. What kind of song? B'simcha Rabba, with a great joy. That was a great, joyous song. Shirat Ayam was the pinnacle of, uh, of, of song. And what did they say in, in that shira? Ve'amru chulam. Who's, what's chulam? Everybody. Everybody. Amru said, said. What did they say? What did they say in the middle of Shira? What was the pinnacle of the Shiratayam? The pinnacle of Shiratayam was Mi Chamocha Ba'ilim Adonai. Oh, Who right. is like you amongst the gods, Hashem? Mi Kamocha. Who is like you 
Ne'edar Bakodesh, who is um, who is Ne'edar means majestic, who, who is who is uh, and clothed in majesty, Bakodesh in holiness. Nora Tehilot, awesome with praise, Ose Fele, who does what's a Fele? Miracles. Miracles. Wonders. 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 Pella. If you say to someone in modern humans, wow, it's a Pella. It means, wow, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. Okay. We've just quoted a posset from the Shira. And we've just pre pre prefaced it with reminding ourselves that that's what they did. Moshe of Israel answered you with this great song. And they all said, wow, who is like you, Hashem? This is the ultimate praise of a Kodesh Baruch which came in the Shira. And we are reenacting the shira every time we come up to the Shemona Esra. We just don't think about it when we're doing it. But what we're doing is reenacting shira tayam, which was the pinnacle of our, of our, of our history, really. The greatest uh, event in our history. You could argue even greater than, uh, uh, than, than Matan Torah, or as great. <laughs> Oh, you could, you could. I'm going to come to the three steps back in a minute, but, but um, yeah, yeah, you yeah, could. But if you're warming up to splitting the sea, that's I'm a nice going. idea. We're actually reenacting the Shira. Yeah. I like that. Kiddushay yeah. Pollock. Yeah, correct, correct. So it, it is, it is a bracy and it is a reenactment uh, of the Shira. Uh, we've not finished yet. Have a look at the next bit. Shira Chadasha. What does that mean? A new song. A new song. Shibachu Geulim. Ah, there's our word again. Those who were redeemed, Geulim, the redeemed. Shibachu, praised. So they, the, those who were redeemed, i.e. the B'nai Israel, who were redeemed from Egypt, redeemed from the, the, the Red Sea, they praised Hashem. How did they praise Hashem? With a shira chadasha, with a new song. Nobody had ever sung this shira before. This was a brand new song. Mi chamoch ha'ba'elim Adonai. This was... No, the B'nai Israel. Miriam said it afterwards. She came along with the ladies afterwards. This was as Yashir Moshe of B'nai Israel. Then... Moshe and the whole of Bnei Israel, presumably including the women, um, sang this song, okay? Mi Mocha. So we're, we're repeating it again. We're saying, those who were redeemed, i.e. us, the people at the Red Sea, sang this new song, Lishmecha, towards your name. Where did they sing this? Al Spatayam, on the banks of the sea. Which sea? The Yamsuf. It's just That's describing it. Shira. Yachad, Kulam, together. All of us, Hodu, thanked the Himlichu. What's Himlichu? What's the root of that word? Melech, me, made him our king, made him our king. We all acknowledged Akadish Baruch Hu's kingship. What have we just been doing in the Shema? Acknowledging Akadish Baruch Hu's dominion over us. The Amaru, and what did we say? The other major part of Shira. Apart from Micha Mocha, what was the other major part of Shira? Adonai, Yimloch, Leolam, Va'ed. Hashem will reign forever and ever. That is a declaration of, of uh, kingship of HaGadosh Baruch Hu forever. So we have just praised Shira Tayyam by quoting, by describing what happened and quoting verbatim the two main parts. Micha Mocha, and Hashem Yimloch Le'olam Vo'ed. So when we say this, Ezrat Avotenu, what we ought to be doing is closing our eyes and imagining ourselves at Kriyat Yamsuf, having gone through Kriyat Yamsuf. That's the idea of Ezrat Avotenu. That is what we're meant to do. We're meant to reenact in our prayers the idea that, imagine what it must have been like to have been there. What's it say about, about Kriyat Yamsuf? that the lowest slave saw greater visions than Yechezkel ben Busi, than the, the great visions of, uh, of Ezekiel. You read 
Yechezkel and he talks about the, the throne of glory with these crazy visions that he had of, of supernatural things and the, the heavenly throne. It's said, the Midrash says, that the lowest of the low saw greater visions than Yechezkel at, the, at Yamsuf. That's how we're meant to try and get in the mood um, at the time of Ezra Tabotein. That's what this is. This tefillah is all about. And then we come to um, the um, uh, slightly different uh, phrase phraseology now. The last bit before Shemona Esra. Up until now, we've been reenacting the past. Okay, it's all been uh, it's all been past tense. It's been uh, um, about about Kriyat Yamsuf. It's been about all in the past tense. Shibachu. Past tense, we praise. Okay. Hodu um, vehim lichu. Past tense, we thanked and we crowned. Vaamaru, and we said, now this next bit is a prayer for the future. Let's see what it says. Stur Yisrael, the rock of Israel. Who's that? Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kuma, arise. We're telling a Kodesh Baruch Hu, get up. Bezrat Yisrael to help Yisrael. Yeah, help Israel. Okay, what did we start this paragraph with? Ezrat Avotenu. So we are help. saying, what did we say about that? Achareihem, Avnehem Achareihem, children after them, Bechol Dor Vador, every generation. Well, we are every generation, aren't we? So now we're saying, okay, now it's time to fulfill your word, God. So Yisrael, God. Kuma, arise, Be'ezrat Yisrael, and help Israel. Ufidei, chinumecha, ufidei, same word as Pidyon Ben again. Redeem, who? Yehuda v. Israel. Why Yehuda and Israel? They were separate. The ten tribes, the ten tribes that were exiled. Two, two kingdoms. The... Two kingdoms, Yehuda in the south, Israel in the north. Okay, it's not just about us, Yehuda. It's about Israel as well, our brothers and sisters, wherever they are in the world. Ufedei chinumecha. That means chinumecha. What's a ni'um? Ni'um Adonai. If you say ni'um Adonai, what's that mean? Speech. Ni'um is a speech. Modern Hebrew, ni'um is a speech. Ufedei chinumecha. And redeem us as you have said you will. Yehuda Yisrael. I redeem Yehuda and Yisrael. Go aleinu. Our Redeemer, Adonai Tzavaot, Shemo, God of hosts is his name, Kadosh Yisrael, he is the Holy One of Israel. And then finally, Baruch Ata Hashem, blessed are you Hashem, and Ga'al Yisrael, who has redeemed Israel. Okay, it's a past tense. So we started off in the past tense, Ezra Tavotenu from the past. We spoke about Shira. We spoke about um, what we did back then. And then we come straight up to the Shemona Estra with a almost a plea to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. You know, with all those things we've just said, do them again. Kum Abba Ezrat Yisrael. Now's the time. Arise and do it again. Help us now, here. Why? Because you are the Redeemer. Go Aleinu, another go out. And we finish with Ga'al Yisrael. You are the one who has redeemed Israel in the past. And now we're going to ask you, we're going to ask him actually, um, Mefurash, and we're going to uh, very clearly in the Shemona Esra itself, we're going to ask for Ge'ula, aren't we? We're going to say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Go'el Yisrael, in the present tense, blessed are you Hashem, who is redeeming Israel, who redeems Israel on a regular basis. Uh, it's not just in the past tense. Here, we're harking back to the past in an attempt to remind ourselves and the Kaddish Baruch Hu, as it were, that he's got a job to do. And we want him to do it now. And that is to redeem us. So um, we've come to the end of Ga'al Yisrael. Um, we haven't got time now because we're up to, uh, time is up. We haven't got time now to um, go through the halachot of the... Um, how the Chazan ends with Ga'al Yisrael is a very, very complicated halachic um, arguments as to whether the Chazan should say Ga'al Yisrael out loud 
or should say it quietly, how much of it he should say quietly, whether we, the congregants, should say it with him, before him, after him. It's a whole balagan. It's next week's shiur, please God, will be all about the concept of smichut, gi'ula, litfila, the connection between gi'ula, redemption, and tfila. The Gemara, the Gemara in Brachot tells us that the concept of gi'ula, of redemption, must be connected to the tfila, to the amida, and therefore, according to some opinions, to actually say amen to that bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem Ga'al Yisrael, when the Chazan says it, is an interruption that you don't make. Now, that is not a universal opinion. I'm going to go through next week with you all of the different opinions, um, and then um, we will um, come to a conclusion as to how we ought to do it, uh, given uh, the diff when we've heard all the different opinions. But right at the moment, what we've just done is we have just been through a, a transformative experience by reenacting Shirat Hayam. Um, and when we say that to Filah of Ezra Tavotenu in the mornings, that's what we've got to be thinking about. It's very hard. Especially, you know, when when you uh, uh, I've got to say it fast to keep up and everything, but that's the idea of tefillah. The idea of tefillah is to get you in the right frame of mind, uh, and the frame of mind of Ezra uh, um, Abotenu is about reenacting Shira Ayam. Yes, Jack. Sorry, sorry, okay. Jeff has got two questions. One is choreography, and one is a pub question. Right. We'll have the choreography one first, please. Who says that? You say you say you say okay. I was always taught as a child, when you say the immediate, you say three steps three forwards. Why do we say three steps? Okay, so um, Jeff. Okay, Jeff has asked about the three steps backwards and the three steps forwards. Um, it's a long answer. I'll start with that next week because it's a long answer. <laughs> what is the seasonal connection between? <laughs> The seasonal connection between what we've just and it, okay, Rosh Chodesh and Rosh Chodesh Kislev, so it must be something to do with Hanukkah. Okay, um, what is the connection, everybody, between what we've just done and Kislev? Don't know. Go on. Ah, the Maccabees. Yes, Micha Mocha. Very good, Jeff. Micha Mocha Ba'elim Hashem. The 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 Rashi Tevot. The head letters. Mi Kamocha Ba'elim Hashem. Spell Maccabi. That's where Maccabi comes from. Me. It's a, it's an acronym. And they had it on the shield. The, the, yeah, the Maccabi. Very good, Jeff. Excellent. Very good. Very good indeed. Okay. Uh, any questions in the room? Any more? Yes, Frank. There's another connection, I think. Hello? I don't think it's a direct quote, otherwise you'd have it in the corner there. I think it's Venema, as in the concept that we've just been talking about, Venema in the Torah in Pasha B'Shalach. This whole thing. It's not a direct quote. It can't be a direct quote. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a fair question. There's another connection. One sec, one sec, Hannah. I'm just listening to Frank's question. I'll come back to you in a sec. I think it is. Uh, well, Frank is saying that Riv Rivam, we spoke about Riv Rivam and we spoke about that being Hashem fighting our cause or pleading our cause. Um, and in the Shira, we say Hashem Ishmil Chama, God is a man of war. Um, I think the man of war comes after you've pleaded your case and you, <laughs> they haven't listened and then you go on to become an Ishmil Chama. Yeah. Hashem Shemo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, a man. God is fighting for us. Yeah, I think. I think. It, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I think it is connected. Uh, I think there is definitely a connection. Hannah, you wanted to say something else. I I missed part of what the previous 
speaker was saying, because he might have said what I was going to say, which was um, there's another connection to Hanukkah, and that's where we say Lariv um, Rivam. Danta etinam masalta the masalta rabim so rafta et rivam danta et rivam yes yes that's another connection very good excellent when we say in uh, we say that in alanisim alanisim of Hanukkah very good excellent rafta et rivam yes pleaded uh, pleaded his, uh, he, he pleaded his cause very good excellent all right um, any other comments or questions before we go. Okay, see you next week for uh, um, for the choreography of uh, the choreography of three steps forward and backwards and upside down and whatever, and the halachic conundrum of what to do with Gaal Yisrael. Okay, that is what we'll do, please God, next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Laila Tov, Shavuot Tov. Thanks, Johnny. Kodesh Tov.